Here we are at this beautiful old oak that uh, that collapsed in half this year. It's quite a huge tree and the wind took it down. I think it was starting to rot at the centre anyway. But um, I'm going to do a little experiment here and this is kind of follows in line with what I'm doing with the wild garlic and and uh, increasing diversity. So earlier, a couple of months, well a month ago, I gathered a dry chicken of the woods. So I blended that up with some flour. Uh, I would have liked it a bit drier, but um, I added too much liquid by accident, so I don't have enough flour. <laughs> so um, I'm going to drill some holes in the wood and set all the set all the dough inside the holes and hopefully at some point we may end up with chicken of the woods growing up here. Now we also have a dried up beefsteak fungus which I wish I had kind of used earlier but uh, I might plant, I might drill it into this part here because this is all going to rot eventually now that it's exposed. So I may try and get a beefsteak fungus growing on this side of the trunk, on the living trunk. Yeah, such an amazing old tree. It's a shame it collapsed in half, but the other side over there is still producing a load of acorns. That's where I gathered one whole, one whole uh, tub of acorns, about four or five kilos. So yeah, so that's the plan for now. I'm going to get to work and uh, get all these, get all these pots filled. getting a low battery already. I've only just started. <laughs> Show how hard this oak wood is. There's all the holes. I think this dough is going to go further than I thought it might, so I might lather a load of it over the top and things like that. Um, if I can't fill all the holes with it, I'm going to do a more, going to do more holes. See how many I can get out of this log. And then over there, I may put the shiitake things that I forgot to plant a few years ago. Um, They've still growing the mycelium over them, so I may get them bedded in there and see if they come up there. This drill will actually go, um, but uh, I'm just going to see if I can inoculate the wood with chicken of the woods and see if this comes up tomorrow. And then the beefsteak fungus I put in the little hole over in the distance there, you can see the little hole in the tree. So I'm hoping that that comes up there at some point too. So I've just done a few of these. Now the main problem is it's possibly going to be that the rain will wash all of this away. Um, fingers crossed it doesn't. 
but what I may do is take advantage of some of the cracks that are in along this log and see if I can get them to kind of stay. Uh, I've got a lot of the stuff so I may inoculate a few other logs if there are any around the place but we shall see. I'm going to carry on and stuff some other areas with this dough and see what happens next year. I just found on the ground here. It's one of the Lepista species. Probably it's either sordid bluid or wood bluid. Now um, I'm just going to do a bit more, well actually to be quite honest it's probably more sordid bluid looking at how thin the stems are and how and not as fleshy they are because wood bluets tend to be more fleshy so I'll probably say that's a sordid bluet. Taking a lot more out of the jewel than I expected trying to put all these holes in this old oak is a very tough old oak beautiful old tree such a shame that it collapsed but um, but what I've realised is there's a lot of grooves around here. There's a lot of grooves under here where it's all cracked. So I might scoop most of the chicken of the woods spores, or, well, dried chicken of the woods, into most of these cracks and see if it comes up there. So I'll fill up the holes I've already drilled and I'll get a smaller drill and hopefully it won't be so hard to drill with a smaller drill to put the taps in for the shiitake further along. Now I'm wondering whether that's going to impact the mushroom growth because it's so... F I mean, they're going to be so far apart that I don't think the mycelium should meet. So there should be enough of a distance to grow a few things on the same log. Uh, I may, however, cut some of it off. That may be a bit more trouble than it's worth, but that's another possibility, is to see if I can um, put another species further down there without having to cut everything apart. Uh, I mean, it's all experiments, so worth a try, I guess. Right, so there's so much of a crack in here that I can just basically lather it all the way up inside there. It's much easier when I have two hands. <laughs> kind of lather the paste place everywhere, it just goes right inside. So, um, that should hopefully inoculate that corner with it because that should keep away from the rain and it shouldn't get washed away. And I've also put loads of it in all the cracks down there too. So I've almost used it all up actually. Um, yeah, I'll do a bit more around the other side and that should do for the chicken. Now for the balancing act. Do not recommend climbing while you hold your phone. So now I'm up here, I'm just going to fill the rest of the dough into these cracks. So there we go, it's all done. Now even if the rain did get down there, it should dilute it and take the spores right into the trunk. That's the only downside around here, is that railway line in the distance. That's the only part of human civilization that we hear once in a while, but at least it's mostly electric. So it's not terrible apart from the noise pollution. When there are no trains, like during, during mid-lockdown when there were no trains, it was beautiful. There was no sound whatsoever, but the stream and nature and the birds. <laughs> So yeah, I'm just going to go and get the plugs for the shiitake mushrooms and I'm going to put them onto those logs down there. Here are the mushroom dowels with shiitake mycelium on them. Now I don't know if these are actually viable because I got them from Matthew Rooney a long time ago from the mushroom table and I forgot to plant them, I left them in the fridge. I left them in the fridge for a very long time, it could even be up to three years. So whilst it looks like there's mycelium in there and they don't smell and then smell off or rotten. I'm hoping that they are still alive. Now, um, I mean, apparently they die off in two to four months, so <laughs> who knows? I'm going to put them in the log. There's no harm done. If they grow, they grow. If I've missed out, I've missed out. 
Um, I just didn't get round to doing it at the time and I completely forgot that they were in the fridge. So uh, yeah, I'm going to see if I can get these in and see what happens. actually drilled exactly the right amount of holes without realizing it so they're all they're all um, they're all in the wood um, I'm not sure they are going to grow they did look a bit far gone when I had a look at them but we will see we'll see what happens in the spring or autumn Fingers crossed that there was a bit of living mycelium still on there, but worst case scenario is nothing will happen, so I might I could inoculate with something else in the future, especially all of that wood down there. I might try and because it's such a big tree, I should be able to get a few different species on the different lengths of wood. So uh, yeah, I'll maybe do that. But for now, that's that that's all of that done. I've got the dowels in there. I've got chicken of the wood spores all the way down this big log and I've got beefsteak fungus buried into the living trunk over there. So we shall see what happens. Um, this is a complete experiment because I don't know if all the samples were too far gone. But if they haven't, I look forward to seeing what happens in the not so distant future. <laughs>